Daisy, ik mistis. To get a better sense of the kind of restriction imposed by the full rank consumption, it's a good idea to look at an example of where the um, where the full rank cons- uh, consumption breaks down. And one such example is given by a so-called dummy variable trap. For this um, example, we look at our population of all econometric students. And we let ourselves be inspired by 80s American high school movies. So we know that everyone is either a jock or they are a nerd. And we define random variables to describe this population. So we define one random variable jock, which for every student small omega in the population takes the value one if omega is a jock and is zero um, otherwise. And also we define a random variable nerd, which for every student in the population takes the value one if omega is a nerd and the value zero otherwise. Now we know that we have to have jock plus nerd equal one, right? Because for every omega, either jock is one and nerd is zero, or jock is zero and nerd is one, which in both cases gives us one. Suppose that our true linear regression model is given by score is equal to 30 minus 10 times dark plus 10 times nerd plus two times study time plus our unobserved component u. So the first part here defines a regression curve. And we want to draw this regression curve and the way we're going to do it is draw it separately for jocks and nerds. So once we know whether someone is a jock or a nerd, The only thing that can vary is study time, and we just put that on the horizontal axis. So let's start with jocks. So if you're a jock, you get basically the intercept 30 for free. Then you get minus 10 times. Now you're a jock, so this will be a one for you. You get minus 10. So you're at 20. Then you get 10 times nerd, but you're not a nerd. So the variable nerd takes the value zero for you. So this part doesn't change anything. And then you get two points uh, on the um, exam for every hour that you studied. So this will be a upward sloping linear function. So this. Uh, as for jocks. Now, if you're a nerd, also you start out at 30, you get minus 10 times jock, but jock is zero for you as a nerd, so that doesn't change anything. But here, so you, you are a nerd, so nerd is one, so you get 10 times one extra. So you're at 40. And then you get two points for every hour that you studied. So this is the relevant curve for nerds. Now, the important thing now to realize 
is that we can play around with these numbers without actually changing the picture that we draw. Or in other words, we can change these numbers without changing the regression curve. For example, suppose that our model is score e equal to zero plus 20 times jog plus 40 times nerd plus two times study time and uh, our US before. Now, suppose you're a jock again, right? So you get zero, you start from down here. Then you get 20 times one, so 20 because you're a jock. Then you don't get any any like the, any of those 40 points because nerd is zero for you. But then you get two times for every hour that you study. So, right, so you exactly get the same curve as you got before. And the same for nerds, right? Nerds get zero plus 20 times zero plus zero plus 40 times one, so 40, which is exactly where we want them to be. And then two points for every hour studied. So we would be drawing the same curves. But the this is exactly what the full ranked um, assumption is supposed to rule out, that you can write down two different um, coefficient specifications and still get the same regression curve. So let's look at the full rank assumption in more general terms. And for this we want to describe the problem that we encountered when we discussed the dummy variable trap in slightly more uh, in a slightly more general setting. So a similar problem occurs whenever we can we have two sets of coefficients and let's so the first set of coefficients let's just call beta not beta 1 and so on. In our dummy variable trap example the numbers were um, 30 minus 10 10 and 2. Um, so we have these coefficients and then we have a different set of coefficients. But you know these are supposed to be uh, different from each other so um, different um, represent different numerical values so I better also give them different names so I'll just put uh, tildes on uh, on this set of coefficients and uh, they are not the same. In our dummy variable trap example the numbers here were 0, 20, 40, 2 so while you know the 2 is the same on both sides but the other coefficients are different so the whole set of coefficients um, are different so I find two sets of coefficients that are different, but still, if I write down the uh, regression curve part, if you will, of the linear regression model, it doesn't matter um, which set of coefficients I choose, I will get the same regression curve. So if I generate axes and u's, I can then use my linear regression model with these coefficients uh, to compute outcomes, oh, so y's, or I could use the linear regression model associated with these coefficient. Uh, it wouldn't matter, I would compute the same outcomes. So both sets of coefficients generate the same outcomes. And so just by looking at observed axes and observed outcomes, I wouldn't see a difference between those two sets of coefficients. So we say they are observ 
observational observationally equivalent. So why is that a problem? Well, if I can pick to choose these betas or um, the beta tildes, and I will get um, regression models that look and feel the same, I'll start wondering, yeah, what then is the true model? And that is something that I care about because I, I, I've set out to estimate those betas, right? Um, but if these betas have an equal claim to being the true betas as, uh, as these beta totals have, then which set of coefficients am I trying to estimate here? I don't know, so I find this very confusing. Also, remember that we interpreted this beta one, for example, to give us a causal effect of changing x1 a little bit, right? And ultimately, we are interested in recovering uh, the um, causal effects of regresses. So now, in this model, the causal effect of x1 is given by coefficient beta one, but if I can just exchange beta one for beta one tilde, and I have a regression model that is equally true, then which one of the two coefficients is the causal effect of x1? Again, I'm, I'm, I'm very confused and I don't really know what I'm trying to estimate here. And so the full rank assumption is basically, basically just says these kind of situations should never occur. Because if they occur, then I get confused about what is the true model that I'm actually estimating. And we want, don't want that to be, uh, to happen.